Cursor and Anthropic both released coding agents the same week, and I wanted to learn which one's better. So I put them to work on a Rails app that I have running in production. I gave each of them the same three tasks to complete, and this is what I learned along the way. Let's first talk about the UX. So for Cursor, for 0.46, the big change is that they promoted the agent to be the default way of interacting with the LLM, but you're still operating inside of a fully featured IDE. Your interactions with the agent are really the primary way in which you're making changes to the code. I found that I, I didn't actually need to see the files open. There wasn't really much for me to do. I wasn't gonna tweak the files in the midst of an agent's actions. I also just thought that some elements of uh, the agent design were a little bit clunky. Um, at times there would be two or three different places where I could click accept. At times there would be terminal commands running in the agent pane and the terminal command needed me to hit yes or no, but the prompt had gone off of the right hand side of the screen because the pane was so small. Um, there were also in times when I saw like a spinning circle and I thought that I was waiting for a prompt gen or I thought that I was waiting for an LLM response, but really it was waiting for me to click a button. And now that the agent has taken prominence and the agent's doing so much action for you, I found myself just saying like, do I really need two thirds of the pain taken up by the file editor? By contrast, Claude code is a CLI. You run the command in the root of your project, in the root of your code base, and it will examine your project and then ask, hey, what do you want me to do? And you tell it what to do, and then it just asks you a series of yes, no questions as it comes up with commands. Should I do this? Should I not do this? You just have that terminal window. That's all you're seeing. At no point are you seeing the files open up and close. And I felt like since you're abdicating so much control to the agent, that single pane with a single interface to the agent was the right way to do this. And so when it comes to UX, I preferred Claude Code. Next, let's talk about code quality. And let me tell you a little bit about the challenges that I ran them through. So I have a Rails app. Uh, you can think of it as like an email wrapper for GPTs. So for instance, if you wanna try it out, you can email roast at hihi.ai, just forward an email to it. And it will roast your email and reply back to you. And there's a whole bunch of these different uh, email bots set up and each one has its own system message and tracks conversations, et cetera. Now I've not touched this thing for nine months because there's enough complexity there that it's like hard for me to load up the context into my brain. And so so this felt like a good opportunity to get some momentum on a project that had stalled. The first thing I needed to do was clean up my tests. I was getting some warnings from some of my gems. I just needed to update some of the gems and some dependencies. And then I wanted to replace LangChain for direct calls to the OpenAI API. And then finally, I wanted to add some support for Anthropic as well. Now, it's worth noting that for both agents, the underlying model that I was using was Claude 3.7 Sonnet. Uh, and so as expected, a lot of the code was similar or the same on both approaches. I did find though that the one advantage Cursor had was that it had the ability to search the web for documentation. And towards the end when I was adding Anthropic support, it was kind of funny that you know, Claude 3.7 Sonnet was struggling to add support for Anthropic to my Rails app, but whatever. Um, I, I found that what Claude 3.7 Sonnet wanted to do was to mimic the syntax that was already present in the code for OpenAI. And so it was having a hard time getting the Anthropic gem to work and figuring out the right parameters and the right syntax to call. And what Cursor was able to do was search the web, search for the documentation and find the right answer. Uh, what Claude Code ended up doing was sort of giving up and writing its own implementation for the Anthropic API using HTTP, uh, which worked, uh, but the fact that it lacked the ability to search the web and to look up documentation is really the only reason that I would give the plus to Cursor here. Like that, I definitely saw Cursor use that ability to get itself out of a jam once or twice in this section. Size. Next, let's talk about cost. Uh, Claudco can get expensive. Uh, I guess expensive is relative when we're talking about software development. I believe that I probably had about 90 minutes or so of working with Claude all in in order to implement these three changes to my code base. And it ended up costing about $8. So not a lot of money in the grand scheme of software development. But if I were doing this for three or four hours a day, every day, it, it would certainly add up. I, I do think there'd be a lot of value there, absolutely. Um, but it is non-trivial. Cursor, on the other hand, I pay my 20 bucks a month. With that, I get 500 premium model requests. 
uh, going through these three coding tasks used less than 50 of my 500. So less than a 10th, my subscription costs 20 bucks a month. Let's just sort of naively say that it cost me $2 to run this exercise on cursor and it cost me $8 on Claude code. Claude code was about four times more expensive. Uh, this super, super naive, but you can see that Claude code is non-trivially more expensive. And I do think that the psychology of metered pricing versus the subscription pricing is interesting here. But for most folks, Claude code is not going to be a replacement for cursor. It's going to be something they use in addition to cursor. And so they're really going to have to ask themselves, even if Claude code is better, uh, is it worth the incremental cost over their subscription when they're already getting so much use out of the cursor agent included with the subscription that they already have? So purely in terms of cost, cursor agent wins. Uh, the 20 bucks a month gets you a whole lot more usage and it does seem like Claude code is about four times more expensive than cursor agent. Next, let's talk about autonomy. So I first did the exercise with Claude Code and Claude Code will propose a change to you and you have three options. Yes, you can do this command. Yes, you can do this command and you don't need to ask uh, again for this command in the future or no, I want you to do something else. And what I found was in the beginning I was hesitant, uh, but after it had performed the same command a couple times, I finally would just say, yes, okay, you can do this command and you don't have to ask for permission. And by the end of my session working with Claude code, it was doing almost everything autonomously. I had I basically had earned, it had earned my trust and I had given it permission to do, I think just about everything except for like RM. Um, Cursor agent, on the other hand, did not have that concept of gaining trust. It would ask you, do you want to accept this command or accept this change, or do you want to turn on YOLO mode? And even though I'd already been through this experience with Claude code, where I'd given it permission to do basically everything, I did not trust cursor agent to enough to turn on YOLO mode. And so I hope that cursor agent does roll out that sort of incremental permissioning that earned trust. And it feels like an easy enough change. I suspect we'll see it in a, a update soon. But as of right now, as we all try to grapple with the question of how much do we trust our coding agent? How much do we want to let it do on our local machine? I think Claude code really nailed that model with the earn trust or the incremental permissions. Finally, let's talk about the whole software development lifecycle. Um, I tried to embrace test-driven development or at least having some good test coverage with these agents. I do feel like since I'm giving up a lot of the control in the code that's being written in the file, I want to make sure that I have a lot of tests. And uh, I felt like Claude Code did a much better job both working with tests and also working with version control. So my workflow with Claude Code was asking it to first uh, write tests for the feature that it was going to build, then to build the feature, then to make sure that the tests pass, and then to commit its changes. And I'll say that the best commit messages that have ever been written uh, for code that I guess I've written, I didn't really write it, uh, were written by Claude Code. Like its commit messages were beautiful and it seemed to do a much better job of interacting with tests um, than Cursor did. And I think part of this is just that notion that it is a command line tool. It does live in the terminal. So just any time Claude Code was running terminal commands, it felt much more natural. Uh, anytime Cursor Agent was doing this, it just it didn't feel like it fit right. Again, back to some of the UX stuff. Like I, I had a, a small terminal window in that third of a pane on the right hand side, and it just did not feel like Cursor Agent was as comfortable of getting output from my tests and then updating the files based on uh, what it was seeing happening in the tests. And then also, I, while I do like Cursor's um, Git repository UI uh, that lets you browse all the past Git, uh, all the past commits and everything and browse the branches. I really, really do like having that baked into my IDE. Um, the place where it sort of fell short was uh, it has a little button where you can auto generate the commit message and it just does like align. It basically it writes like commit messages like I would, uh, whereas Claude codes were just so detailed, like you have to give it points for that between its use of tests and its use of very detailed, very verbose Git commit messages. I feel like Claude code did a better job of making up for some of the concerns I would have for an agent than cursor agent did. 
before I crown a winner here, let's just step back and acknowledge two things. One, uh, I gave both of these code agents, uh, these three coding tasks on a project that I was stalled on and both of them completed the job. I sort of can't believe that we're here. Uh, I, I did not expect these coding agents to work as well as they did. And I sort of have the last couple of years thought that uh, while LLMs worked really well for coding, it was really essential to have a human in the loop orchestrating the changes. And this is one of the first times that I've used a coding agent and been truly impressed with the results and felt like it did a better job than I could. Was it perfect? No. Is my code base as complex as what you might be working on at work? Probably not. But this is a non-trivial code base and these things apply changes and wrote tests and wrote commit messages better than I would. Uh, second, I don't want to set up a false dichotomy here of uh, do you use cloud code or do you use cursor agent? The truth is you probably should be using both. You, uh, If you want to, actually, you can just open up cloud code inside a terminal, inside a cursor, and then you sort of get the best of both worlds. Um, but honestly, if you're a software developer these days and you have the ability, you should probably just get the $20 a month cursor subscription, get familiar with it, and then you should just, as you use cloud code, watch your costs, make sure you're compacting your conversation history often that will help keep your costs down uh, and just use it and and get familiar with both the tools so it's this is not an either or thing all that said I preferred Claude code uh, I did think the UX was better uh, I loved the way that it had the incremental permissions I loved the way that it earned my trust and I thought it did a better job uh, working with version control and working with my tests uh, all that said the cursor team they iterate they ship so fast so I'm sure they're gonna be learning from Claude code and you're gonna be seeing a lot of these changes and improvements coming to cursor very soon